Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. My name is Gemma if you're new here and I create weekly art content so make sure you subscribe, hit that notification bell so you never miss one of my uploads. In today's video I'm going to be showing you the haul of cheap art supplies that I recently bought from Tiger and I'm going to show you absolutely everything I bought and then I'm going to try out all of those products and we'll get my verdict on what I think of them. So let's get started. The very first product that I have is this watercolour paper. So it's 20 sheets of watercolour paper. The paper is 180 by 240 millimetres. So it's a nice size paper if you are wanting to work on a fairly small scale. I'm going to open it up to see what the paper actually feels like, whether it's got like a nice grain tooth to it or whether it's quite smooth. I'll try and get this with my scissors because I can't seem to open it very well. So first impressions on the packaging is quite tricky to get into. There we go, got it. Like a little book format, but then each of the pages, they are glued around each of the edges. So you have to be quite careful when you actually want to get a piece of paper out from your pad. It, it feels okay, it's not the best quality watercolour paper that I've ever felt before, but bearing in mind that this was quite a cheap watercolour paper set. This was £4 for this entire pad of watercolour paper, so 20 sheets of paper for £4, that's pretty good value. So I will be giving this a go in a little while. So next up on my budget friendly art materials are these tube watercolours. So keeping within that watercolour theme, I have bought the tube watercolours from Tiger. They were £4 also, so you could pick yourself up a whole kind of set really for £8 is a really good bargain. This set comes with 12 different watercolours. First impressions, I mean they just come in this packaging with plastic on the outside of it to keep those watercolours within the box. So we can see those tubes there, they're a pretty decent size, they're 12 mils per little tube or 0.4 fluid ounces if you are in the US. So a good little product I think. I mean the packaging isn't anything special, it's just a cardboard box. So I mean for four pounds though it's a pretty good it's a pretty good little set I reckon. I will give that a go in a minute. Keeping within the watercolour area within Tiger, I bought these watercolour pencils. There are 12 in this tin and it cost me £3. So £3 for watercolour pencils, which I think is such good value. And considering it even comes in a little tin, I think that's brilliant. So the actual pencils themselves look like that. To be honest with you, I don't love the fact that they are all fully black like that, but they do have the colour of the pencil on the very end. You see how it shows the pink on the very end of that pencil, and then obviously that's the pencil end. So I will be giving those a try out in a moment. But I think I would rather see more of the actual colour of the pencil on the pencil itself. So that would be my only criticism, but I, I do appreciate that it comes in this tip. Very next product, I have never tried these type of pens before. So I think these are Tiger's answer to like a, an alcohol marker pen. These were an absolute steal. I don't know what they're gonna be like yet, so I will test them out in a bit. But I got two packs. I got a green pack with these double-ended markers, and I also bought a blue pack. Now, these were two pounds for a set of three. So four pounds for six markers. I think that's such good value. I've never tried these type of markers before, so I'm really intrigued to give them a go. Yeah, I think that's really good value. Two pounds for three marker pens. So the green ones, you see there's three different shades of green and then three different shades of blue within the pack. The packaging is just like a blister pack, which isn't anything special, but for two pounds, I think, you know, I can, I can let that one slide. So yeah, I will be trying those ones in a bit. And then lastly, I got two, two little washi tapes. I just thought the design on them was really pretty. So both floral patterns, they cost 50 pence each, which again, being tiger is an absolute bargain. So little floral design, and then a blue design, little daisies. Again, I just thought it was a really sweet design and I probably will use them just to hold my watercolor paper down whilst I'm trying out the products that I've just bought. I will get um, set up 
and we will get started on trying out some of those products. Also, what do we think of the new background? If you didn't see my last week's video, I will put a link in the description below so that you can go and see how I created my new studio space. I'm really excited to use it. So yeah, that will be in the description below. So let's try out these products. Okay, first up, I'm going to test out these marker pens. So we'll start with that dark blue. We've got that chiseled nib and we've got the pointed nib. I'll start with the chisel. Okay, that's quite nice. So, I mean, it looks fairly similar. The one on here looks slightly darker than the one there. So that's our swatch of that chiseled end. And then our swatch for the pointed end. That's quite nice as well. I quite like that shade of blue. Next up is number 14. I quite like how they layer on one another. So in terms of the colour, I think if you layer it a few times, then it actually looks like the colour on the packaging. Yeah, that's starting to look a bit more like that. So if I just use one layer, you can see how much lighter it is. The more I add to that swatch, the closer it becomes to the actual colour of the packaging, which isn't too bad, actually. I'm quite impressed with the colour matching on that packaging. Okay, and then lastly, for this little pack, is the um, one which is number 11. I was quite impressed with these two but mm, that colour matching is terrible and if you look at the actual colour of the pen that looks nothing like it. It's like they've put the wrong ink within the pen. Okay so out of these ones I like those two colours. I like this colour but it's supposed to be a, a light blue and to be honest that is not a blue. To me that looks more like sort of a C green. That's not this colour. Let's see what the greens are like. So that blister packaging, let's get that open. So let's swatch the greens. I'll start with the darker green, which is number seven. Looks like a nice sort of rich green. I mean, they're not really that close in colour. That one is a lot more vibrant, whereas this one looks sort of more like a mossy green, I would say. Um, so more like a forest green. This green that looks more like sort of a fluorescent-y kind of green. Yeah, I'd say that one does look quite similar to the actual packaging. And then lastly, this pair, which is number one, and it's the lightest green out of all three of them. It looks on the packaging more like a sage green, but here it looks like it's going to be a lot darker. Oh no, actually it's not. I like that. I think that looks like a really nice colour. That's my favourite out of all three of those. Next up, I'm going to swatch the watercolour pencils. So there are 12 in the pack. First impressions of these, that they're, they feel like a very light pencil, like they feel like there's not much to them. I mean, they feel cheap. They don't feel like good quality pencils. I'm going to swatch them and see what they look like. And then I will do a swatch with the water as well to see how they react with the water on them because they are watercolour pencils. So we'll start with our warm colours, so our yellows, and reds. You can get quite a nice amount of pigment down on that watercolour paper. And do a lighter swatch as well. I'm not using really heavy pressure, just a really light. You can see on these darker colours where the tooth of that paper is now. But you can see how textured this paper actually is. Also doesn't give you any names of the pencil colours on the packaging. I can't, I really can't tell what colour this is. It looks so similar to the brown, but it might a really dark purple. We'll see. But I, I have no idea what it's going to be. I can't tell on the actual end of the pen or the end of the pencil. It's kind of like a brownie red. Colour-wise, they're not too bad. They, I don't know, there's just, I don't like the feeling of the pencils. Like, I don't like the feeling of the actual material that they've coated this pencil in. And it just feels so light. So it feels like a really cheap pencil. It doesn't feel like there's much in terms of that colour throughout there. So it just feels very, very light. And I suppose for three pounds, I mean, I can't really expect too much in terms of that. With, you know, a tin and 12 pencils for three pounds, you know, that's barely anything per pencil. And yeah, they just feel really light. They do feel cheap. 
and I don't like how they sit in that middle part of the actual container there. Now I'm going to just do a nice gradient. So I'm going to go from dark all the way to a light yellow, just lifting up that pressure. Okay, so I've got some swatched out from a dark to a light. I'm going to try and see how that looks. I'm just going to add a little bit of water to a paintbrush and then glide that over to see how that colour adjusts. Okay, so it's a really vibrant colour this yellow. I probably should have started with the light end first because it's just pulling all of that darker pigment towards that light area. It works quite nicely. One of the things that I think these would be really useful for is if you've got children and they want to try watercolours but you're a bit worried about mess in the house, I think using these would be a really good way for your children to get started on watercolours. Or if you yourself are getting started on watercolours and haven't got a lot of space in your house, you want just a couple of items, this might be a good way for you to get started. Let's try it from the other end first. So not bad. I mean, I started with that really light area and we can see it's like a really, really light wash. And then down here it's way more pigmented, but it does lift quite easily from the paper. So you can remove some of that colour fairly easily with just like a clean paintbrush. So if I clean my paintbrush just with water, I think I will be able to lift that off there quite easily. So you can see how it's lightening there. You don't need that much water on your paintbrush in order to get that watercolour. So we'll test it in a little while to see what it's like when we want to then add some more colouring pencil over the top. And how it will also work if we then want to add water to that area to blend it out. I'll give that a go as well. This purple is a bit of a non-colour really, in that really light area. And even where it's on a lot heavier, the heavier pressure where I added that to it, I can see where the darker pigments are sitting on top of the tooth and where the lighter pigment has taken on within like the deeper area of that tooth. And I'm not too keen on that. So I've given that some time to dry and I can see sort of the paper tooth coming through where I have actually painted or added that water. So let's see if I can blend in this sort of pinky colour and see how they layer. You can't get like a lot of definition, it kind of just then blends out. So if you're wanting to get a high amount of definition on here, you could just like go over your work with a colouring pencil and then leave it as that without adding any of that water over the top. My paintbrush is way too wet for this to get any sort of like definition in there. So it's just lifting all of that pigment out of the paper. And we'll swatch, I'll swatch the other colours just up here so we can kind of see how they change with the water being added. That blue is pretty vibrant. Go on to this blue to see if it's much different in terms of this one. Oh, okay, that's a lot lighter, light wash. And this watercolour is sitting quite nicely on the paper. One thing I would say about these is the colour of each tube and what colour they wrote does not go with the colour of the actual tube itself. Like that's way more vibrant than the colour on here. They don't really match all that well. It'll be interesting to see how the colour matches from the pigment of the actual paint to then the colour on the tube. This one's not going through. Goodness, it still hasn't pierced it. It's ridiculous all of that still has not pierced it. Anyway, let's swatch these colours. On the box, the colours really don't look anything like they do on the tube. So let's actually see how they swatch. I think that's closer to the actual colour on the tube than the ultramarine blue. They don't look anything like one another. I think if I wait and add another layer on there, maybe it will darken, but that doesn't really look like that green at all. And again, that is nothing, nothing like that green. Okay, yellow ochre. I mean, to be honest, I don't think you can really get yellow ochre wrong. Let's see though. Yeah, I mean, I would say that that's pretty similar. If I was to add another layer, I think I would get a nice solid yellow ochre there. I don't know whether it's just the light that I'm sitting in, but I think that looks more like a lemon yellow than... Oh, it is, a, it is supposed to be a lemon yellow. I thought that this packaging, I thought it looked like a cadmium yellow, but it's supposed to be a lemon yellow. So, by the name, it does look a lot more like the colour it should be, but that colour on the packaging does not match. I was expecting the black to be fine. 
because you know it's black overall i would say that these paints they don't match the colors here at all really some of them match but barely any of them i'm now going to try using all of the art materials to create a final piece using the tiger cheap art supply i'm going to start by sketching out my illustration i'm just going to sketch out using one of the water soluble watercolor pencils just to get my basic lines in and then i will use the pens and the watercolors to then create the piece I'm going to give you my verdict on all of those art supplies that I have tried today but before I do that make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell and also like and comment on my video let me know what art supplies you think you would like to try first up is the pens now I think that these are an absolutely brilliant product and I would definitely purchase more of them. I think they're excellent value and they worked really well. The colouring pencils I probably would not purchase again. 
because I just did not like the way that they felt. I didn't like the actual material of the pencil. There was something on there that I didn't like the feeling of personally. And I didn't think that they um, laid down that well on the paper. I think if you're starting watercolours and you've got limited um, access to other materials then perhaps those sorts of colouring pencils would be really useful for you or if you've got young children that are wanting to use watercolours but you're a bit worried about mess in the house these also would be a good product for that however I personally wouldn't use them again. The tube watercolours they were pretty good I quite liked those they mixed well and I created some nice tints and hues with those. The colours were slightly off the colour matching on the tube itself and the paint inside did not go so if you're wanting really accurate colours for what's advertised then this isn't the product for you. I would use them again, I'll probably use them up because I have bought them, however I wouldn't repurchase. I would rather save my money up a little bit and buy a better product. Okay let's talk about that watercolour paper. Now the watercolour paper is not the best quality watercolour paper I have felt before. It couldn't take a lot of water, it ruckled up quite easily and I didn't like how regular the tooth was in the paper. I like a more organic paper. However, for the purposes of the video, it worked quite well. I could see quite a bit of that grain coming through in my painting, which I wasn't so pleased about. And those washi tapes, I mean, they're just washi tapes. I would have preferred that they were matte. I, I, I didn't like that they were a shiny tape. However, it's 50 pence for some tape and they're quite pretty, so I think that's fine. Out of all of the products, I would use the markers again. If you're really wanting to learn how to use the marker pens, buy yourself some from Tiger, learn how to use them. And then if you're interested in trying those more expensive marker pens after that, then go ahead and buy some. And I'll definitely be purchasing more of them to learn how to use them and create some more videos for you guys. So if you do want to see more videos, make sure you subscribe. If you haven't seen my video from last week where I transformed my garage into a new studio space, make sure you go and check that one out now. I absolutely love my studio space and I think that you would also like to see it. So go and check that one out and I will see you next week. Bye everyone.